Yo, Kid this Guy here. Hey, so I want to talk to you guys about crossover and what it means to you, different settings that you can set in your AV receiver processor that can drastically change the way bass sounds in your room. Yes, I've done tons of crossover videos, but as people get new speakers, as speakers get more capable, subwoofers get more capable, or you change rooms, understanding the crossover and how to set your crossover in your room becomes more and more important as your system gets more complex. So I want to talk to you about things you may have not known about a crossover. All right, so let's just start with the basics. What is a crossover? Well, there is a crossover that's built inside of your speakers and there is a crossover that's a setting in your receiver or preprocessor. A lot of people get confused. The crossover that's built into your speaker internally is a crossover that pretty much just directs traffic. Let's say you have a bookshelf speaker, you have a tweeter, and you have a mid-bass driver. So two different drivers playing different frequencies. That internal crossover built into your speaker simply directs traffic. It tells this frequency to go this way and this frequency to go this way. So if you play too high of a frequency, the crossover keeps it from going to the mid-bass driver and routes it to the tweeter instead, and vice versa. If you play too low a frequency, say 400 hertz, 500 hertz on lower, then it's gonna direct traffic to the mid-bass driver away from the tweeter so that nothing is playing frequencies that it's incapable of playing. You don't want your tweeter playing 20 hertz, so you want your crossover to direct that traffic to the mid-bass driver, vice versa. You don't want your mid-bass driver trying to play 9,000 hertz. It just can't do it. You want your tweeter to do that. So that is an internal crossover built inside of your speaker. The AVR setting called crossover is kind of the same, but it does a different task. So the crossover setting in your system, your AV processor, your AV receiver, even your stereo integrated amplifier, this crossover also directs traffic, but it also keeps traffic away. So here's what I mean. So let's say you have that same speaker, the tweeter in the mid-bass bookshelf speaker. Yes, it has its internal crossover, but that internal crossover isn't limiting anything. It's just directing what you send to it. But you don't wanna send everything to your speaker. So let's say that bookshelf speaker that you have that has that mid-range driver in that tweeter can only play from 55 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. That's its range. Almost full range, not quite, so you don't want to put all the bass to it. So you go into your AV receiver, preprocessor, or integrated amplifier, and you set the crossover to what the speaker can handle. So in this case, it can only play 55 hertz on up. So we don't want to send it 40 hertz or 30 hertz or 25 hertz because now we're getting into two problems. One, you're getting into territory it can't even play anyway. You won't even hear it because it's not capable. But two, you're also running into issues if you turn it too loud. Now you can potentially damage your speaker sending it frequencies it's not capable of playing. So you set a crossover for your main speakers. So if you go to your AV receiver, let's say you have a home theater, you have five speakers, you'll probably see crossover for the front left, front right, center, rear right, rear left, or some just make you do it for the fronts, the rears, the sides. They may make you group them, but nonetheless, you have a crossover setting. And what this is doing is limiting what you don't want to send to your speaker. So if I have that 55 hertz bookshelf speaker, I can go into my receiver and set it to say 60 or 80 hertz or 70 hertz, something that allows it to play comfortably. It cuts off everything underneath that number. So if I set my AV receiver to 80 hertz, well, everything 80 hertz on upwards will play. Anything under 80 hertz starts to drop off relatively quickly to protect that speaker. So now that we know that, what happens to the rest of the frequencies? If I set my AV receiver to 80 hertz, what happens to everything 80 hertz and lower? Well, let's assume you have a subwoofer. All the bass that you aren't playing at 80 hertz will go to the subwoofer. So 80 hertz on downwards, the subwoofer will now take care of because it's more in tune with those kind of frequencies. Your bookshelf speaker can only play to 55. Maybe you want to set it to 80. So all your, all your subs will play 80 hertz on lower and then 80 hertz on higher, your speaker will play. So the crossover in your AVR, in your receiver, still directs traffic. 
It still sends the information where it needs to go, but now you have the choice of what goes where. So if you set your speaker to 100 hertz, then your speakers will play 100 hertz on up and your subs will play 100 hertz on down. If you set your receiver to 40 hertz, your subwoofer will play 40 hertz on down and your bookshelf speaker will play 40 hertz on up. And there will be a slow roll off on both so that they blend together. So that is what a crossover is, and it's a little bit different than what's built inside your speakers. So there's a good chance you probably already knew that, but now it's time to talk about things that you may have not known about. So let's start off with LFE Plus Main. If you have a Denon product, a Marantz product, or even uh, I think Pioneer, or anything like that, most manufacturers have a setting called LFE Plus Main main. And what does that mean? It's very important to get this right. So LFE stands for low frequency effects. And that's what you see on subwoofers. Low frequency effects is what you get in movies. Explosions, thunderstorms, grenades. Those are low frequency effects that are made to go to the subwoofer. The main part in LFE plus main is your main speakers, your front left and your front right. That's the main in LFE plus main. The LFE are the subs, so it's subs plus main speakers is what that means. But what does the setting do? So if you have it set to just LFE, no LFE plus main, just LFE, then what you're setting in your receiver is that all LFE effects come from the sub and everything at the crossover point goes to your speakers. So again, if I set my receiver to set my main speakers to 80 Hertz, my speakers will play 80 hertz and up, and my sub will play 80 hertz and down. If I set it to LFE, that's what it'll do. It'll take all the LFE and route it away from the main speaker. So the main speakers will play different kinds of bass than what the subwoofer will, okay? So that giant grenade that gets thrown or that car crash in that movie will only come from the sub because it's playing low frequency effects. It is, it is its own separate channel. Now, if I go into my AVR and I set the setting to LFE plus main, what am I doing to my system exactly? Well, you're telling your mains to also play the subwoofer effects at that crossover. Here's where things can kind of get confusing. So if I have my AVR set to 80 Hertz, okay, my main front left and front right speakers are set to 80 Hertz. If there are LFE effects that are 80 Hertz or higher, the speakers will also play them as well as the subwoofers. I'll repeat that. If you have your crossover set to 80 Hertz in your receiver and you have LFE plus main on, you no longer have LFE effects only coming from the sub, you now have LFE effects coming from your main speakers as well at the crossover point. So if that grenade gets thrown in that movie and it blows up and the audio engineer has 80 hertz in that explosion, the 80 hertz will come from both your mains and your subwoofers because you have your speakers set to 80 hertz. If that explosion is 50 hertz, but you have 80 hertz set in your receiver, your main speakers will not play 50 hertz because you have the crossover set higher than that. You following me? I told you it's gonna get a little bit confusing. So LFE plus main simply doubles the bass. So your LFE effects come from both your subwoofer and from your main speakers. Why would you want that or not? The reason why you may want that is because you may have large towers or really capable speakers that can play some subwoofer effects. That's perfect. Maybe you want the most bass possible, so you want everything to play those frequencies. It could be a good experience. More bass, double the bass. It could be cool, but it could cause more problems than good. There could be too much bass. They could cancel each other out. Maybe it's too loud. Maybe you wanna crank your system, but your main speakers can't play as loud as your subs, most likely. So you're lowering the volume because you have your, your speakers set to play subwoofer frequencies. You may not like that. Now, if you have an Anthem AVM70 or some of these higher end processors, you have the same setting, but it's called super sub fronts inside of your AVM70 if you have Anthem. And that's what mine is called. I'm gonna pull up my app so you guys can see exactly my setting.
So here on my phone, this is the AVM 70s and menus here on my phone. And you guys see that I have an LFE low pass filter. This is what I set my crossover to for my subs, 120 hertz. You wanna set that because you want the subs to be able to play all the way up to 120 hertz information. My front crossover is set to 120 and I'll get to that. But you guys see this uh, toggle here that says sub fronts. That is the same thing as LFE plus main. This is an important feature because if you are listening to music and you want your subwoofers to play while you're listening to two channel music, let's say you are a two channel music person or you often switch your home theater to two channel but you want your subs to play, then you want LFE plus main or super sub fronts or whatever it's called in your settings to be turned on. Otherwise, your subs won't play anything. Music and LFE are different. Again, LFE is for movies, but you want your subs to play for music, you want your LFE plus main or your super sub front, whatever, to be on. Mine is off, and I will I guess I can show you why. So what I'm showing you guys right now, this is, I was I changed my subs around yesterday, so I reran some calibration. This is how my subs look in my room by themselves. This is just my four subwoofers calibrated with no um, Anthem room correction turned on. There's no smoothing in this because for some reason when I click on it, it doesn't do anything. So there's no smoothing in this line. But what this shows you right here is how smooth my bass is in my seating positions, these two seats here, with just my subs. Now, what I did was turned on super sub fronts, but I didn't have a crossover. I turned the crossover off and I ran LFE plus main. So I ran them large. I set my speakers to large and this is what happens. I get about 15 to 20 decibels more of bass when I double my subwoofers with my main speakers. Turning on LFE plus main, it really it amplified the bass 20 more dB, just turning those on. So the red line is just subwoofers by themselves. The blue line is subwoofers plus LFE plus main. So a lot of bass, but you guys can see it created some inconsistencies, some cancellations, some nulls, right? So you don't just want to turn everything to large, even though my speakers are capable. So I decided to play around. So I changed my crossover. I kept LFE plus main on, but I set my crossover to 130 hertz. And so I still have really good bass. I fixed my 35 hertz issue, but created a new one at 40 hertz and fixed the one at 90. So let me turn off the blue line. And this is LFE plus main with 130 hertz crossover. And this is what it looks like in comparison to the red, which is just my subs. Again, tons more bass, but I'm losing a little bit of that consistency across the frequency spectrum. So I didn't stop there. Now I changed my frequency, my crossover to 80 hertz, looks largely the same. Then I tried 40 hertz, looks largely the same, but again, have a couple problems. Then I changed it to, then I turned off super sub front and just did an 80 hertz crossover, which is this. Now this looks pretty good. This is LFE plus main turn off with my crossover set at 80 hertz. I'm still getting tons more bass and that's because my AVM70 is routing that bass to my subs away from my main speakers. So now I'm getting consistent bass again and I'm getting more of it. So I decided to continue. Now I have my crossover set to 120, LFE plus main is off, and check this out. We're getting a little bit smoother. Everything from five hertz up to, let's say, 60 is the same, but 60 hertz up to 120 is a lot louder than that blue line now. So we've gotten a little bit better. So I said, okay, let's try a couple other things. So I was just messing around messing around and found that the best setting for me in my system, if I'm going to use my speakers um, as big towers is to, let's see, what did I choose? I chose to do 120 Hertz crossover on my speakers. This gave me the best frequency and the most bass. So again, the red line is just my subwoofers by themselves. The orange line is the Arundals turn to 120 hertz with LFE plus main turned off. And now I'm playing five hertz in this room 
with super confidence and it's a beautiful curve i have a I have a house curve that's why it dips as it goes towards 120 hertz um, but this is a house curve so it's purposely falling off as we get louder or higher in frequency so it goes to show that just because your speakers are capable or are large does not mean you should set them to that because you could very well be hurting yourself in the bass region than helping. Again, I'll pull it up. This is with mains on. LFE plus main, LFE plus main, LFE plus main. I'm going to turn off the red, turn off the orange. If I was to run LFE plus main, look at all these dips look at all these knolls these cancellations you can hear that i mean that's a freaking 20 decibel swing on some of these frequencies 25 decibels or even worse we drop 30 decibels compared to the rest of the line if you run lfp plus main so yes i'm pumping in more bass that doesn't mean that it's reaching my seat the way that it should so yeah i could probably time a line and fix this issue which i will do off camera but you may not be proficient enough to do that or have the means to do it. So setting a crossover, which is the orange line here, is what was best for me so far. Nice curve. I can flatten it if I want to. I like a little bit of a bump in the subsonics. I love low bass. But it gradually rolls off, and then the crossover is at 120 hertz, and then my speakers will take the rest of it. So you may not know what a crossover is, or you may but you may not know how different crossovers affect the sound. And I hope this illustrates to you guys that it's important to get a software like this. Room EQ Wizard is free. Buy a $79 mic, $80 mic, put it in your seat, and then measure so you can see what crossover is best for you. The last thing that I want to say about crossover is that if you don't use LFE plus main on your system, if you set your crossover on your speakers low, well, your subs won't play as much bass. So what I mean is if you have your speaker crossover set to 40 hertz, well now you're telling your subs to only play 40 hertz or lower. So yes, you may want to pump some bass to your speakers. Maybe they can handle, let's say you have some speakers that can handle 30 hertz and you want to use that 30 hertz and you set a crossover to 40 hertz or whatever, or even full range, well, you now tell your subs not to play that information because your main speakers can handle it. And if you have a lack of bass or wondering why you're not getting chest pumping bass, well, it could be because your crossover on your main speakers are set too low. Therefore, your subwoofers are only playing 25 hertz, 20 hertz, 15 and 20 down low, right? So you're missing out on some information because you have your main speaker crossover set too low. In this case, if you want to keep the bass in your mains, but have your subs play bass too, at that point is when you use LFE plus main or super sub fronts or whatever your setting is called. That's when you want to use it, when you want your subs to also play what your main speakers are playing so that you don't cancel out your subs because your main speaker crossover is too low. So this video may or may not be over your head. I didn't go completely into detail about crossover. It can be very complicated. It, it gets deeper than this. And I don't want to go into this huge rabbit hole because I try not to make too long of videos. But you guys are always welcome down below in the comment section to start a conversation. There are a million people in the comment section that know a lot more about this than I do. So ask your question because if I know it, I'll answer it. But there's a lot of people who will take it a step further and elaborate it and explain it maybe better than I can. So if you're confused about crossover and what you should set your crossovers to, leave it in the comments. I'll definitely answer you. Or if not, somebody definitely will. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe if you are not already. And we'll see you in the next video. K-Pace guy out. Peace.